Let's go right across to our guest joining us live with us is Rajiv Das Gupta, epidemiologist and member of the National Task Force. Also with us is Neeraj Gupta, CEO of Genes to Be and health expert. Let me start with you first, uh, Rajiv Das Gupta. Uh, now, this is a very, very important concern that is being raised by the AIMS director, Dr. Randeep Guleria, because he's saying that if we're not careful, uh, we have a situation where uh, barely about uh, a little over uh, perhaps 15% uh, of our population has got a single dose. So one will have to be extremely careful in that light until there is a significant chunk of our population that's vaccinated. People have to adhere to social distancing norms. But just look at the national capital. The minute it, minute it has been unlocked, you have crowds thronging markets, all of them, or at least many people who are not strictly following these masking norms. Now, this is just another repeat of a wave that is waiting to happen if people are not going to act in a responsible fashion. Um, thank you. Uh, let me put this into perspective. First, uh, between the first wave and the second wave, uh, according to data on assessment released by the HMIE, uh, which was, uh, sorry, uh, by the IHME, which was, uh, whose, whose projections was also, uh, you know, referred to or used by the government of India, uh, the mask use had actually fallen by about 10% and the mobility index had risen by about 20% because uh, most sectors of the economy were open by the time first wave actually ended. In other words, uh, the second wave did not, did not take off till the new variant came. So, so merely using or not using masks, while that is absolutely relevant, uh, is, is not a very simple explanation uh, for the third wave. Uh, Two sets of things need to be done. Uh, one, of course, goes without saying, and I, in that I fully agree with uh, Dr. Guleria, that, uh, that people certainly need to continue to practice uh, COVID-appropriate behavior. But on the part of the government, it will require investing a lot more into behavioral research, investing a lot more into uh, risk communication, community engagement. These are, these are elements which certainly need strengthening. The second thing, economy and activities need to open up and uh, political and administrative leaderships have a, have a very uh, challenging task of balancing these. But what's absolutely crucial is making workplaces safer, which is not about, uh, not just about hand washing and keeping distance and so on, because it's, it's not really easy and workplaces is not just about offices, but thousands and thousands of uh, different kinds of workplaces across the country which requires structural elements of ventilation, air conditioning system, and so on and so forth. That's something on which we actually have very little uh, advisory or regulation to make it safe for COVID uh, from the COVID point of view. And thirdly, uh, states uh, and the districts, the public health administrations, that is, need to continue with testing, tracking, containing, etc. need to continue with genomic surveillance and most important, we will await the results of the zero surveys that the ICMR is now uh, under, will undertake uh, for each district. So, projecting a third wave is a culmination of a lot of these, lot of these things, um, and and uh, this this requires cooperation both uh, with communities as well as with governments. Well, absolutely. I think uh, you've uh, really expressed it really well, Dr. Rajiv. But in fact, let me take this across to Neeraj Gupta. Neeraj Gupta, I think there are a number of such grey areas that still exist. Yes, it's very important to open up the economy. Livelihoods are at stake over here. Uh, not just those who are employed, but perhaps those who are, uh, are secondary, you know, employed by them as well are dependent on offices and several such aspects functioning. But in terms of the actual guidelines, what happens, for instance, when you're opening up in the peak of summer and you have centrally air-conditioned offices? Now, what does one do in such a situation? Do, can you just open up the windows? Can you just allow for people who may be sitting right next to each other? What really is the guideline for that? At the moment, at least, there's not much that we know in terms of what is a safe office working environment in context of COVID. Yeah, uh, thanks, Madhav. Uh, I completely agree with you. We have not really given any kind of set of guidelines as to as I'm understanding that in terms of we do have a very little uh, knowledge in terms of because we 
cannot really sit in offices and work from home and work from home. Uh, the offices need to be as different settings as what Dr. Rajiv just mentioned. They have to be different set up uh, industries and institutions which work in office environments. And in the upcoming summers, which are peak in India, the air conditioning will be one of the, uh, I would say, uh, kind of a big super spreader activity. Which and we have also been able to see some studies in the past from WHO and many other organizations that it has become some kind of an airborne um, uh, method as well for the virus to travel with. And uh, opening windows is definitely, yes, one of the best we can achieve, but uh, in a lot of these modern offices these days in the complexes, there is not much room you can achieve that kind of object objective. So we really need to have some kind of a serial guidelines in terms of some filtering mechanisms to device and the air conditioning units that can be uh, developed. But until then, I think COVID appropriate behavior is our best uh, strategy to fight against this, uh, to prevent this from happening, have more frequent uh, masks in office environments to wear, because if you are wearing masks, you are actually 99% protected um, in majority of cases. So even in the office environments, we need to keep masks as the mandatory tool uh, to prevent ourselves from. Um, besides, I think that we really need to also work on continued ramping of testing, uh, as Dr. Raji also mentioned, because it's a very obvious uh, tendency which happens in every state and in, uh, in government in India is that as the cases the number are declining, the testing keeps on going down significantly, and that there becomes a very less preferred solution. So we really need to catch these uh, isolated incidences that happen with this reference of virus uh, at the early stage so that we can uh, test them, track them, and isolate them. And then we also need to do a lot more sequencing uh, and screening through two separate approaches now. We can nowadays do screen screening of a lot of these samples to understand which variants are they from, and then certain portion of that we can do for sequencing-based approach, which can be uh, to understand some novel mutants are there or not. So these two approaches need to be integrated well in the model guidelines from the uh, government to uh, understand this pandemic in a better way from particularly the wave's point of view, uh, the variants and the different strains that is coming with. Uh, as we already know that this third wave has uh, struck in some of these different parts of the world uh, with the Delta variants uh, as prominent there. So yeah, we really need to have a very strong mechanism to support this. Right. Uh, as we all know, in fact, uh, Dr. Rajiv Das Gupta, that we have uh, the MHA that has written to all states asking them to implement the five-fold strategy in its new advisory. Now, is there a fear, genuinely, amongst the epidemiologists, uh, I mean, we all know what Dr. Willi has said, that, you know, in fact, states could perhaps, in the enthusiasm to, you know, restart economic activity, be taking things too quickly. Perhaps we need to do it in a very, very careful, calibrated and phased manner that we open up our urban centers or even rural areas so that we just ensure that, uh, you know, the kind of behavior we are looking at, the kind of norms that we are looking at are followed strictly by all those individuals. Well, it's, it's, it's a very fuzzy issue at best. Uh, and, and I would again go back to the issue of workplaces because uh, because it is about workplaces really as the economy opens up. Uh, in, the, in the last uh, few months, uh, prior to the lockdown, prior to the second wave that is, uh, anecdotally almost anyone who was in the workplace, uh, or at least the vast proportion of those who were in the workplace, uh, actually got COVID and those who, those who stayed at home uh, were mostly able to evade uh, the infection unless a member of the uh, household uh, was actually in the workplace. So the, the, the safety of the workplace is of paramount importance. That includes schools. Now Telangana, for example, has decided to open all educational institutions from July 1st. But, but do these education institutions, do these buildings rather, uh, have, have, uh, have COVID safe environments? The answer is most possibly no. Uh, in the interim, when the class 10 and class 12 uh, classes were actually resumed functioning in some states, uh, there is evidence that uh, many of those students fell ill, they carried the infection home and so on. So, so anything that is indoor and, and what, what gains optics is, is, is crowd in streets. Now, in days of India is always going to remain crowded. That, that's something you can't uh, wish away. Uh, and, and that's the reality with which we will right. have to work. 
So, so the mere optics of a crowd is not really the 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 uh, the, 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 the big risk factor. The big risk is indoors, and that's something we have learned from across the world. Uh, we we may not necessarily be in a position to do what say UK does or or US does or many other countries do. We will have to work within our limitations. But uh, I again repeat, indoor workplace safety right. is of paramount importance. All right, uh, Dr. Rajiv Das Gupta and Neeraj Gupta, I'd like to thank both of you for joining us and sharing with us your perspective. Very, very important words indeed. Something that perhaps uh, not just uh, uh, governments at the state and central level, but policy makers, healthcare workers, and all those who are responsible for the running of offices would have to consider before reopening their respective workplaces. Thank you so much for joining us and informing us about all of those aspects. And moving on, uh, it's news coming in from Jammu and